Hey, I'm Mihul here at TechEd in Houston, 2014, with... Can you please introduce yourself uh, oh. if, for those who don't know you? Uh, I'm John Papa, and I run a pizza joint that you can get pretty much anywhere <laughs> in the country. That's awesome, John. <laughs> All right, so I do know of you as well. Now, John, you're no longer with Microsoft, but you used to be for a time. And, yep. you know, so people may remember you, you were... What, what, what did you used to work on back in the days in Microsoft? Uh, at Microsoft, I was the Silverlight Evangelist, and I also worked with uh, Windows Phone and Windows 8 for a little while as well. Nice. Now, uh, what are you up to these days? These days, I work at uh, Walt Disney World. And I worked down in Orlando and do a lot of web and solid programming, clean code, and good uh, practices. Uh, and you've been doing quite a bit with client-side technology as well, yes. HTML5, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about, first of all, what have you, you've introduced in Visual Studio, a couple of file templates. Can you talk about that, please? Oh, you're referring to uh, Sidewaffle? Sidewaffle. Crazy name, serious sandwich, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Sidewaffle is something I believe Mads Christensen and Syed Hashmi? Uh, put together and it's a community program basically to allow us to have new file templates and project templates okay. in Visual Studio. So how does it help you? The way it helps you is you're developing some code in some project and you see yourself re doing the same thing over and over again. Uh -huh. well, wouldn't it be great to have an angular template when you create a new controller that gets you started? Right. So I was one of the first ones to help them out there where I said okay let's just take all the Durandal and Knockout and angular templates I have and I uploaded it to their open source project. So now you can use those right in Visual Studio. All right, can we talk a little bit about some of these client-side technologies? Let's start with Durandal. Mm -hmm. What does Durandal do for you? So there's a great way to look at these client-side libraries, JavaScript libraries. Sure. There's two flavors I like to look at. One I call frameworks, the other ones I call tools or libraries. Okay. And the difference between the two is a framework kind of gives you everything you need to get started with things. And it gives you a lot of the plumbing to hook things up. And then Durandal's one of those. And it doesn't just do data binding, it gets you navigation. And it gets you view composition and dependency injection and modularity and a lot of cool stuff that we get out of things like .NET. And then you've got other things that are more like libraries like Knockout which does data binding and templating and it does those things very well. And it's not that one's better than the other, it's more of a if I just need this, if I just need data binding, I'm going to knock out there. I don't need full-blown Durandal to do that. Right. Now, how do you figure out, or how does one figure out, because there is overlap in some of these libraries. Sure is. So how do you figure out when to use which piece? Is there If you figure that out, you let me know. No. <laughs> okay. I would love to know myself. Um, all right. So that does lead me to, uh, I will plug, uh, you have a very good course, I believe, on Thank Google you. site. Uh, now, what's it titled? Building apps, Bingo, oh my gosh, building apps with Angular and uh, Breeze, I think it is. Oh, nice. Okay. Now, Breeze being the Ward Bell's client-side. Data management, rich data, data basically, okay. on the client. It's not just a client-side database, though, right? It's got some other... Things. No, there's no database at all, actually. Okay. it's uh, So if you've used RIA services with Silverlight, it's kind of like RIA services, but for JavaScript. And, you know, with it works with Angular, it works with Durandal, it works with a lot of things, which makes it works with Backbone and whatnot, too. So uh, what's nice is, you know, you got to pick a great framework. You say it overlap. Right. But really, if you're looking at building a client-side library, client-side app these days, you should be looking at Angular, Ember, Durandal, Backbone, those are the big boys in the room. There's others, but those guys have such a big jump on everybody else. Right. And the adoption rates of, the, of those out there are so huge. And in fact, Angular right now has been a meteoric rise. Right. In fact, I'd even say it's, it's other than jQuery, it's the only thing out there that's really taken that kind of a rise in the JavaScript space. So, let's talk a little about Angular. Mm -hmm. For those that are not familiar with Angular, how would you describe it? So, the way I describe Angular is you're building a web-based application these days. Why would you want to use it? It's, it's going to help you write code and focus on the business features as opposed to how do I get this page to show up or how do I make the data go from here to there or that kind of stuff. Things that we take for granted in .NET because okay. .NET just does it. Right. So, it helps jumpstart you. What is it really? It's a rich client framework. You want to build browser-based applications that work on a variety of devices, that's where you want to head. Oh, all right. So, it is not just for, I, I, I find, maybe I'm wrong, but it's, it is not just for strong client-side desktop style apps, right? So, if somebody says, I want to have something that runs in a full-screen browser, maybe maybe tablets, mm -hmm. 
Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't hear about it on the mobile story so much for Angular. Um, but I, I find that a lot of people are wanting to do great desktop style apps. So maybe I've got my WinForms and you know, Silverlight's kind of gone. So they're saying, look, this is client side. You know, runs in the browser. It's really nice, and it gives that great functionality. Right. right. So am I wrong in that? You're not wrong. Uh, but where it started again, remember, five years ago, okay. mobile and tablet wasn't as pervasive as it was as is now, and. The thing that really helped Angular out in a lot of ways, think about, let's you mentioned Silverlight. Everybody's building these rich desktop applications. Well, what do they build them in now? What if you're not using Windows 8? You know, what if you don't just want to focus just on iOS with an iPad? How do you take something you can build and run it in multiple devices right. and build a rich desktop application? So Angular really filled that need for the enterprise for a while, which is why a lot of big companies, and DoubleClick, one of the Google teams that use it, they use that for all the, they use Angular for their application. So I think it filled a need, which is one of the reasons everybody's got that impression that it's really great for those rich desktops. But now mobile is a, a huge push for them. So with Angular 2, that's one of the big things they're looking at is, it works well on mobile now, but it was almost an afterthought originally, and those are my words, not theirs. <laughs> right, right. So maybe it wasn't, but that's how it feels. Sure. But I think in Angular 2, you're going to see much more effort on making sure mobile is the first thing they're thinking about. Oh, interesting. Okay, like a mobile first uh, type of story then. Yeah. Okay. And something to point out too is there's actually uh, a framework called Ionic Framework. Right. Which is basically a bunch of widgets that are built specifically for Angular on mobile. I see. Okay. Now, uh, it'll be interesting to see, right? Uh, I don't know if you have any clue. Are they going to go for like a native style look for each device, or right, right now Ionic is not bad, but it's got a certain look to it, right? It's got a certain look, yeah. Right, but it's a good head start. It's a good head start. So yeah, and there, I imagine there's going to be more too. I mean, the ecosystem. This is what's cool. Angular has grown so much that it's not just Angular adding features now. It's the ecosystem around it is right. building. There's companies like Breeze to do rich data. There's um, Angular Fire, which is from Firebase, right. to do basically a cloud-based hosting solutions or three-way data binding. Right. I mean, three-way is pretty cool. Yep. <laughs> there. <laughs> and then there's also stuff like Ionic Framework. So a lot of these things are being built up right around Angular. Awesome. awesome. Well, we ourselves, so we have a set of client-side widgets, and that's one of our things. We just came out of the client-side grid, and that was the thing. Angular support, right? Exactly. It's, when the ASP.NET team adopts it, you know it's, uh, it's going to be huge, right? And any serious widget maker needs to have, with Angular, needs to have directives built for it. So, right. and that's what all the, you know, you guys and the others are doing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, listen. We'll put a link to your course as well. Thank you. And uh, are you still doing your awesome blog? I am. And uh, yep, do all the video courses. And I also do a podcast with Jesse Liberty called Yet Another Podcast. Ah, I've heard it. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. it's good stuff. Okay. So we'll put a link to your blog, which has a uh, links to all that good stuff. Yes. Awesome. Thank you again, John. Thank you.